What is up everybody and welcome back to the Maths Guy. Today we're going to be adding and subtracting fractions. Let's go. Okay, so our steps that we need to remember today. Step one, we need to make sure our denominators are all the same. And then step two, all we need to do is add or subtract the numerator. So what is the denominator and the numerator? Well, the denominator is this little number at the bottom of my fraction. And it represents how many that our one has been split into. So imagine this is a chocolate bar. In this example, it would have been split into five equal pieces. Ignore my drawing, they should be equal. And the numerator is how many of those pieces we have. So in this case, we have four. One, two, three, four. But the problem is, if I'm trying to add my four-fifth here to seven-fifteenths, well, that means that my next chocolate bar has been split into 15 pieces, which would look very much like this. Again, imagine these are equal pieces, but this time I have seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But how on earth can I add four fifths to seven fifteenths? How can I get an answer there? Well, the reason it's so difficult is because we have different denominators. We have a five in this first example and a 15 in the second. And if we look back to our step one, we need to make sure the denominators are the same. So let's start again. And this time we're going to look at these fractions and try and make our denominators the same. Well, to do that, we need to find an equivalent fraction. And if you're not sure what an equivalent fraction is, go back on this channel and find the equivalent fractions video to help you. But basically, equivalent fraction means a fraction that has the same value, but with the different denominator and numerator, meaning that the chocolate bar has been split into different amounts. So what I want to do is try and find an equivalent fraction. And I can see that this 5 has a relationship to 15 because it's just multiplied by 3. So if I want to find an equivalent fraction of 4 fifths, I could just multiply 5 times 3, which would give me 15. But then if you know about equivalent fractions, we now need to do the same thing to our numerator, which means I'm going to get my 4, and I'm going to have to multiply that by 3 as well. And 4 times 3 is 12. So my new equivalent fraction is 12 fifteenths. And now I can get rid of that example. So now my question says 12 fifteenths added to 7 fifteenths. And now I can do this. Let's see it using pictures. So if I draw a chocolate bar and I split it into 15 and the first fraction is 12 fifteenths. So it means I have 12 of these pieces. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. And I'm adding that to another chocolate bar, also that's now split into 15, but this time I only have seven of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So let's think about what I now have. Well, each of these little squares is 15ths. So we know my answer now has to be in 15ths. And how many of these little squares, these 15ths, do I have? Well, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So my answer is I have 19 fifteenths. Or what I could have done is just looked at my step two where it said add and subtract the numerator. So if I look back to my question just here and see my numerator 12 added to my numerator of seven, that equals 19. So I didn't actually need to draw this representation. I could have just added my two numerators together. But for this first example, I want you to see it in pictures too. Now, for you super whizzes out there, you will notice that this 19 fifteenths is what we call an improper fraction because we have a larger numerator than we do denominator. So what I could have done when I'm adding these up, I could have realized that this chocolate bar, this top one, is not yet full. So I could have used three from over here and put them in this chocolate bar while adding up. So let's do that. Let's get rid of these three here. One, two, three. And let's add it over here. One, two, three. And now I have one whole chocolate bar, this one here. And then I'm still working in 15th, so my answer will be in 15th. And I have one, two, three, four left of my 15th. So my proper answer would be 1 and 4 fifteenths. Wow, loads going on there. Hopefully that's quite understandable. If not, go back and watch this again. It will make more sense the second time round. 
But let's try and use the quicker method now of just adding and subtracting the numerators with this second example. So this time I have 3 sixths and I'm subtracting 1 third. Well again my denominators are different which means I can't do this question without making them the same but fortunately I can see that 3 could become a 6 if I just multiplied by 2. So now I have my new denominator over here and because I've multiplied my denominator by 2 I now need to multiply my numerator by 2 as well. And 1 times 2 is 2. So now I can get rid of this original part and my question now reads 3 sixths subtract 2 sixths. So looking at my question all I need to do is add or subtract the numerator so all I need to do is do 3 subtract 2 which equals 1 and we're always working in sixths so I'm going to still have 6 at the end. So my answer is 1 sixth. Let's just see that in a quick picture. Imagine I have my chocolate bar it's split into 6 just like that and I had three of them but my question said to take two of them away one two how many do I have left I have one sixth left awesome now it's your turn have a go at working out these two questions take your time put your answers into the comment section good luck and there you have it guys that is how to add and subtract fractions that have different denominators hopefully this video has been helpful for you if it was head on over to the mathshelter.com where you're going to find loads more videos to help you with everything in the UK curriculum maths. But for now guys, I'm going to say peace out and see you in another video. Peace.